Okay, so that that's how my first two inserts on all my tracks are set up. So let me um, go ahead here and uh, minimize this again. Okay, so the very first uh, kick track here, which I think was an inside uh, kick uh, drum mic. Again, we got the uh, the virtual tape machines. Open this up for you. The virtual console. Again, I'm using the Neve console uh, setting on this plugin, just like we talked about. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then from there, we're going to um, an EQ. So let me just solo this kick drum and kind of give you a feel for what it uh, sounds like here. Just this track all by itself. Okay, so hopefully you can hear that okay. It's got some nice thump to it. Here's the EQ curve that I used. Let me uh, first bypass all the inserts and let you see what we started out with with just this kick drum. So let's listen to that unprocessed, completely unprocessed. Okay, so there you go. So it's a lot thinner, a lot more paper sounding, not real thump, nothing you can really feel and hit you in the chest the way you'd like to... Uh, you know, feel a kick drum is more than hear a kick drum, at least on the inside. Um, or, or believe me, excuse me, this was an outside kick drum mic, if I'm not mistaken. So anyway, so by bringing in the virtual tape machines, and I'll turn on one plug-in at a time so you can start to hear the transformation of, of what happens once you start doing some processing. So again, here's unprocessed. There's the virtual tape. And then by the time you get to the EQ, and again, we're just, we're not pushing the tape that hard. You know, we're not, we don't have a real high input on it. We're just, just giving a little bit of saturation. <clears throat> again, pushing the console like you would an old school desk. Again, not pushing it way too hard, not really clipping a little bit in the red, but just kind of pushing it through, giving it that nice warmth. And the biggest change was the EQ curve. This is, um, just pause that for a second so you can hear me. This was, or this is, excuse me, the Wave Renaissance EQ, uh, part of any of the Waves bundles. Um, it's a pretty neat little EQ. It's a very common um, looking uh, graphic EQ. It's a one, two, three, it's a five, uh, three, six band EQ, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> and what did I do here? So what I did here is to get the thump and get the beef out of that kick drum at a right around 50 hertz, um, or excuse me, I'm sorry. At uh, 55 hertz, I actually cranked up the gain a little bit, about 8 dB, which is a, a bit more than I typically do. Um, but to really bring out the bottom end of that kick drum um, with a fairly narrow cue. It's not too wide, not too narrow. It's kind of right in the middle. Um, right around uh, 482 hertz, around 500 hertz, I always cut about you know anywhere from 3 to 6 dB to pull out the boxiness um, of, of, a drum, of any drum, but especially kick drums, you want to get some of that woofiness out of there, pull out 500 hertz on your drums, and you'll hear a world of difference. Um, so that's with that EQ. And then what I did is I took and I rolled off all the high end um, of, of, the, uh, of, of the EQ at around um, 19, say almost 2, 2K, rolling off all that top end. So all I don't hear the snare and everything in the hi-hat bleeding into the kick drum. All I'm really hearing is the kick drum itself. So let me just turn the EQ. It's on and off so you could kind of hear the difference so here's without eq kind of thin kind of papery oh let me move back and get to a section of the song where we can actually hear some more kick and here's with the kick drum with the eq excuse me okay so we went from this kind of papery sound kind of thin um, with a lot of mic bleed and we kind of beefed it up a little bit and that's going to give us the bottom end of the kick drum. Okay. So that's what we did, um, to what I did to this, um, particular kick drum again, using the waves Renaissance EQ and again, using the slate digital virtual console collection on the Neve setting. Okay. Not pushing it actually lowered the, the input a little bit, not pushing it too hard, but at first, so it's, so the signal chain is going from the tape machine in first to the virtual console, out to the EQ, and then out to the fader. So that's the first kick drum. And we'll talk about this sends going to my parallel uh, drum compression uh, bus in a minute. So let's close that. So now what I do 
and again, this is a tip I wrote on the blog on the Home Studio Trainer not too long ago, is as I now start bringing in other tracks, I don't EQ and I don't mix typically in solo. I always will, only the only thing that I solo is the first track that I'm working with. Now when I get to the second kick drum, um, and maybe for this demonstration I'll be turning solos on and off, but typically I'll leave the first kick drum playing while I'm working and carving out EQ and working on the second kick drum. And the reason why I do that is because you want to make sure that when you're EQing and compressing and such, that you're doing it when you're listening to all the other instruments around it, not just in solo. You want to put things in solo when you need to do some critical listening because you're looking listening for something specific. <clears throat> but the old saying goes, it doesn't matter if I have a great kick drum in solo mode. If it doesn't sit well with the rest of the mix, it really doesn't matter. So that's kind of why I do that. Um, so here is the second kick drum. Now what I did on this kick drum, and I did this for a couple of reasons. One, because I wanted to show you another type of plugin. <clears throat> and two, I just wanted to, uh, to try to do something a little different. I used a sample on this second kick drum mic. I didn't just use the raw, let me let me let you listen to what the raw kick drum sounds like. So let me turn off all the inserts. So we're gonna solo this kick drum mic. I'm gonna mute the first one just so you could hear the second one, the original kick drum and what it sounded like. So here's what that sounded like. I'll turn it up a bit. Okay, not too bad. That was the outside mic. The uh, first kick drum was the inside mic. I think I had those backwards. Um, but I wanted to do something. I wanted to get a little more slap, a little more of the beater um, there um, that I didn't have on the first. So what I wanted to do, and I want, and I did, and I didn't have to do this. This kick drum was recorded well. I wanted to show you a different plug is really why I did it. So I use a sample for this, and I do this a lot um, when I get tracks where kick drums aren't really recorded well. I'll use samples to try to replace the kick drum. Um, or blend it in with an original um, recording of the original kick drum sound with the sample. It kind of gives a nice feel to it. But I just wanted to show you this uh, this this plugin. So the first plugin I used is a is a plugin by again Slate Digital, and it's called Trigger. It's a drum replacement um, plugin, much like Drumagog, if you've ever heard of that. Where, where all these samples are recorded in a multi-million dollar studios by Stephen Slade himself, along with uh, Chris Lord Algae, I believe, on this particular sample. And um, they're fantastic drum sounds. And sometimes you could take a nice, well-recorded sample, blend it with the original sample, and blend the two together and get kind of a nice, a nice, real beefy sound. And that's what I did here. So, again, let me play back just this kick drum so you can kind of see how this works. So it's a it's a sample. Let me just turn this up a little bit so you can uh, see it. And it's just seeing the uh, it sees the hits of the actual you know kick drum when it was played, and it put a nice sample on there. And if you can hear this sample, it's got a lot more beat or slap to it. It's got a little bit more of the high end, not as much as the woofy low ends. So I like to blend. I wanted to blend that with the other kick drum um, mic that we just talked about. So that's on its own solo, but when you bring the other kick drum mic back in and you lower this a little bit, so you get kind of that nice where it's too slappy when it's way up here, bring it down, just bring it into taste, add the virtual tape machines by Slate Digital and the virtual console again. And now you, cut, you got this kind of nice, low, beefy kick drum. Let me just rewind it a little bit here for you. So again, looking at the Slate Digital, you can see we're not the tape machines. It goes out, it triggers actually, the sampler is always gonna be the first plugin in, in this instance. So you have the sample, which is trigger, going into the tape machines. Again, not pushing it real hard, just to give a little tape saturation out to the neat console. Again, not pushing it really hard. Just giving it that nice warmth. And you can still hear a little bit of bleed from the first kick drum uh, mic over here. So it's not, it doesn't sound like just a sample. Uh, you can hear some of the other mics bleeding in, but it's a nice blend between the two. And as you notice, there's no EQ on this channel. The way these samples were recorded, you really didn't need to do an EQ on this. They were recorded so well and they're already EQ'd and already compressed, I really didn't have to do anything to this. You know, another thing you want to think about if you're a beginning mix engineer, and I forgot to mention this when I go back to the first kick drum channel, you can see there's no compressor here. I haven't compressed either one of these kick, drum, kick drums yet. I compressed it on the kick drum bus, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, 
but I did. I felt like it didn't need it. The the mix bus compressor, or the excuse me, the uh, the the drum bus um, with the compressor that I used on that was able to tighten up that kick drum. I didn't feel like I really needed it. So you don't always need to add EQ and compression to every single track. If it sounds good on its own, it sounds good. And I added some compressors, and I didn't really like the way it sounded. I felt I had enough compression. Uh, the worst thing you can do is over compress things to the to the point where uh, you, you lost all the dynamics. Um, and one of the one of the um, you know the early things you learn as a mix engineer is everyone not everyone but I did this uh, uh, when I first started out is always overuse compression to the point where you squeeze the life out of out of the, out of the tracks as you over compress the hell out of everything. You want to use compression sparingly. There's a time and a place where you want to over compress if you're going for a certain effect, but in, in most times, when you're just trying to cut down the peaks and tighten things up, you want to use light compression. Um, and again, there's, there's, there's some times where that's not the case, but in this particular example, it, it is. So as you can see, there's no compression here. And we have a nice kick drum sound. <clears throat> so those are the two kicks. So now, what I'm gonna probably do is loop this so we're not constantly starting and stopping. I should have thought of that earlier, sorry. So those are our two kick drums. Okay, an EQ on the first one, no EQ on the second one, just use the sample. The second, let me just change that a little bit, okay. Now let's go to our snare. So for our snare drum, let's bring in the top snare. We had a top and a bottom snare mic. And here's our snare drum. And again, I keep the kick drums going while I'm trying to work with the snare drum. I'll turn it up a little so you can hear it. And that's just the top mic without even bringing the bottom mic in. But let me show you the effects chain. So I don't want to talk over the, the sample, over the music too much here. So here is our effects chain. Again, Virtual Tape Machines is the first uh, plugin, like every other channel. We go to the, to the Virtual Console on the, on the Uneve. And then we go over to a different type of EQ. This is made by Universal Audio. This is uh, the Cambridge EQ, and I'll <clears throat> I'll take you through the, the EQ uh, moves that I made on this. And then from here, we went out to a compressor, went to uh, an 1176 um, compressor, by, again, by Universal Audio, to kind of tighten up the top of the snare, um, the top snare mic to tighten up those dynamics. So let me, let me uh, bypass uh, all these inserts and let you listen to the snare before. So here's the snare before, along with the two kick drums. And again, I've turned it up a little louder than it should be. And now with the processing. Okay, so you have the before and after. So here on the EQ, again, using the Cambridge, <clears throat> uh, a couple of things that I did here, a couple of moves here. So the very first thing I did is I boosted, and I'll, I'll play this before and after EQ just so you can hear the difference. Um, I boosted around 131 hertz to bring out the body of the snare, and I boosted that probably a little higher than I should have. It's around 7 dB. It's probably a little bit too much. It should be more like 5 dB uh, with a pretty narrow Q. Again, taking out around, there was some ringing, some terrible ringing in the uh, 200 uh, hertz range uh, where that snare drum was ringing too through too much. So I went ahead and took out, carved out a little bit at uh, 224 hertz, about 5 dB. And again, right around that 440 to 500, um, took about 6 dB out of there to get rid of that boxiness. And then to bring in some of the, some of the sparkle or the crack to the snare, around 5K boosted about 4 dB on the top snare mic. So again, let's listen to that with, with and without EQ. I'll bypass the EQ. And again, this is just the top snare mic, remind you. Without EQ, with EQ. Okay, so again, subtle. Oh, and before, and I should have mentioned this earlier, but hopefully it, it's it's kind of, um, 
people would probably realize this, so but I'll say it anyway. If you're watching this video and you want to hear these these EQ and these compression things really be able to hear them well, you want to listen to these on a good set of headphones or in a, on, on your studio monitors. If you're listening to this on earbuds or, or or a laptop or something, you may not hear the effect of some of the things I'm doing when it comes to EQ and compression. So um, it, the best is to watch this thing on a good set of speakers or a good set of headphones so you can kind of really hear the effect. So anyhow so that was the snare the top snare mic again with the eq uh with the eq carving out some of the ringiness and some of the um some of the woofiness at the 500 range bringing up a little bit of smack towards the top and a little bit of body in the low ends okay so that was the top snare mic now let's bring in the bottom snare Okay, so again, the bottom snare mic was was uh, was again was recorded very well. Um, so again, what was my signal chain? You're gonna kind of see a pattern here, fellas. So <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the virtual tape machines. I'll play this back for you. Not pushing it very hard. And for this EQ, okay, we went to the virtual console again. This EQ, I used a different EQ just again to show you some different, com different, um, you know, different plugins. Here's a, a Waves uh, EQ. It's a Q10 parametric EQ. Um, and on the bottom snare, I really didn't do too much. I just rolled off to super low ends. Um, I rolled off about 100 and, uh, 102 hertz. Rolled off about uh, 13 dB to get rid of all the low end out of there. And I took out right around that, again, that 500 hertz range, 489 to get rid of that ringiness took about four db out of there other than that i really didn't touch it so when you have the top and bottom mic together along with the kick drums here's kind of where we're at don't like too much bottom snare mic Okay, so that's where we are now. We got a kick that's nice and beefy, punches through. We got a snare that kind of cracks. It's got some body. Um, you can hear it uh, play nice with the kick drum. So that's the kick and the snare up to this point. And again, as you can see, so far no compression. And again, I've only compressed on the on the kick on the uh, drum bus, which isn't always the case. A lot of times I use compressors in conjunction with the with the drum bus. I'll use them. But again, this this thing this these tracks were recorded really well. They could have they could have very easily recorded with compression on the way in, and that's why they sound the way they do. And um, my guess is they probably did. So I didn't want to over compress everything. So again, more plugins is not better. Less is more if the tracks are recorded well. So I just wanted to sculpt and shape the sound. I'm not looking to over compress everything and over process everything. So there's our kick and our snare. Now we go to our hi hats, and again I'll bring up the chain. Same thing, tape machines. The Neve console, and on this one, again another. Uh, this is the Q10 uh, parametric EQ by Waves. Again, didn't do too much here on the hi hats. Just rolled off the super low end at around 267. Everything below that is gone, and I put a little bit of a shelf on it up at around 6k. And on the hi hat, <clears throat> excuse me. We can take a look at the uh, at the actual tracks. This is one of the tracks, if I remember right. <laughs> Yeah, this one was pretty much playing all the way through. There's lots, of, a lot of hi-hat work going on in this song. Um, sometimes if the hi-hat isn't hit as much, I will clean up and carve out all the sections that aren't played like I do with the other tracks. But in this particular song, it was played quite quite often. So here's the hi-hat. Um, and, and I'll do again, I'll take off the inserts and let you listen to before and after. So uh, let's take a quick listen. Okay, so we're just blending in. Nothing, nothing uh, you know, 
earth shattering about a about a about a hi hat. You just want to take all the low end out of there and just get that out of the way and make a clean it up a little bit, and that's really it. So again, real simple uh, EQ. I can I can play this with and with and without the EQ, so maybe you can hear the effect a little bit better. Without, with. Okay, so we have a little bit of sparkle on the and took off the low ends. That's all I really did with the hi hat. Again, nothing, nothing major. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, the toms, if I remember right, there wasn't a ton of tom work that was done in this song. And as you can see here, you can see I cut out all the stuff because it just wasn't didn't play the toms. wasn't a heavily um, played Tom song. Um, some songs are, some songs aren't. This didn't have a lot. Um, so let's just take a look at what I did here and I'll try to find a section where there is a little bit of Tom work in here just so you can, you can hear a, a, a few of them kind of going on here. Uh, let's take a look at that. <clears throat> okay. So with the Toms again, uh, all I did was just use the virtual tape machines, the virtual console, and on the first, there's four toms in this. On the first time, I used the Cambridge EQ, uh, brought a little bit of bottom end in there, carved out some of the woofiness around 500, um, carved out a little bit more around 2K, and didn't do any shelf on the first tom. Uh, the second tom, same thing. I think I just used the Cambridge EQ all the way around. <clears throat> on the second time, I boosted the low end, rolled off the real low ends, carved out that 500, left everything else flat. The toms were, were recorded really well again, and there wasn't a lot of tom work going on. Same thing with tom. The third tom, um, a little bit of a boost in the low end, carved out the woofiness of 500, and pretty much left everything else pretty much flat. And the fourth time, which is probably a floor tom of some kind, um, again, boosted a little of the low end, same kind of EQ moves. I think I probably found an EQ that I liked and I just copied it and pasted it over to all the tracks just to keep things simple um, because it wasn't a, something that stuck out in the song too much. But uh, let's just solo the Tom mics here so we can get to a couple of sections where you could hear them. That's the right symbol. Okay. Here's that third Tom. You know, kind of beefy. And we got a Tom hit over here on Tom one. Here's some more on the third Tom. So pretty straightforward. Tom sounded really good. I just boosted a little bit of low end uh, to give it some uh, some depth and just uh, let it ride and carved out that woofiness at 500. Um, so that's what I did pretty much on the Tom. So now we get to this one mic they put on the ride cymbal, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and it plays, you know, pretty much throughout, uh, you know, this section right here, especially where we're at is going to play. Um, again, virtual tape machine, virtual console. And then the EQ that I did use on this, I used again the Q10 by Waves. Again, it's a ride cymbal. So I pulled out a lot of the low end at around 223, just rolled everything off. <clears throat> carved around 400 hertz where I've heard that harshness in the ride and put a little bit of a shelf on it about 2 dB at around 7 uh, K um, to just bring out a little bit of, of the brightness of the of the ride when he hits it so here's kind of what it sounds like I'll turn it up a little bit without EQ You listen to that again without the EQ. So again, very subtle. Not a lot going on there with the uh, with the ride. I just rolled off the low ends, brightened up the top a little bit, and that was about it. Now we move over to the overhead. So uh, that was the, all the close mics. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're at the overheads and the rooms. And let's talk about the overheads. It was left and right. So I panned them hard left and hard right, which is what you would typically do. Um, and again, uh, my EQ, again, virtual tape machines, virtual console, and then the EQ. Um, what I did on the overheads, I used a Q10. As I rolled off a lot of the top ends, because the symbols to me were really getting kind of harsh and kind of bright, rolled off the low end. 
<clears throat> excuse me, and then just again pulled out a little bit of that 400 plus range uh, to get some of that nastiness out of there. Um, let's let's do left and right together so we can hear the difference here. And here's what we have again now keeping all the other tracks in play. Again, remember I don't I don't just solo everything. I mix everything in context with its with itself with the other uh, in context with the rest of the mix. So let me uh, do the left and right, and let's take a quick listen to what the overheads sound like. And I'll bring, oop, kind of exaggerated a little bit. You mute them. Okay, you lose all the you lose all the top end when you mute them. You bring them back in. Turn them off. Bring them back in. So those are the overheads. So I'm really more or less trying to get the symbols. But what I don't do on overheads a lot of times is if you look at the EQ is sometimes a lot I've seen people and I've done this in the past too. And sometimes it's appropriate and sometimes it's not where they roll off all the low end and they and they roll it off to about 1k and they're just looking to get the symbols. Well, part of the overheads for me is I like to capture part of the kit too. I want to get rid of the real low end. I think I rolled it off around 150. Um, so I'm not really competing with the bass guitar and not competing with the kick drum. But I want to hear the snare and I want to hear the toms and I want to hear the kit. I just don't want to hear the cymbals crashing in my ears. And like I said, I rolled it off pretty good at the top here um, to get rid of all that real brightness. So that's that's just, a, you know, what, what I chose to do with 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 the overhead. So now before we bring the rooms in, here's kind of where we're start. Here's kind of where we're at with the drum kit as a whole before we even um, talk about um, parallel compressing and the room mic. So just to give you a quick listen to the to the to the kit in general, all the close mics with the overheads. So that's where we're starting with our drum sound. Sounds pretty clean. You can hear everything. You got a nice beefy low end. You got some nice crack in the snare. You got some nice brightness on the cymbals, but they're not too much. And the tom's feeling kind of nice. So now we go over to the room mics. Got a left and a right room mic. And just like with the um, with the overheads and the rest of the tracks, I'm starting with you know virtual tape machines over to the virtual console, and then I'm using a going back to the Cambridge EQ on the rooms. And again, not trying to roll off too much of the lows. Uh, I think I rolled off around 90 hertz. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm, I'm sorry. 56 hertz is what I rolled off on the low end for the rooms to get rid of the real low lows that you don't need. Again, you're listening to rooms. You're kind of capturing the room in the kit. And I wanted to, you know, listen to the whole kit. And again, a um, a good a good place to start looking where you want to carve stuff, carve some frequencies out to get more of a. Um, uh, not so much of a boxy sound with drums is around that four to five hundred hertz. So I rolled off about two dB, cut out, carved out about two dB, and then rolled off some of the real high end again to make sure that the, those um, harshness from the cymbals weren't poking through too much. Um, and I think I, I took out about five dB at around six K um, just to roll off a little bit of that brightness because I'm letting the overhead mics pick up more of the cymbals. This is picking up more of the room. So I did that with the left and the right room, just copy the EQ settings over. So here's what we got when we bring the room in along with the rest of the kit. And again, I'll turn it up and exaggerate it and then bring it back down to where I think it should be. Okay, when they're all the way off, no room. Okay, so it brings in that natural reverb. That's what room mics are for, and it sounds it sounds good like that, I think. So um, that's where we are with the room mics. Let me just close this for a second. So now we got the whole kit, and the kit sounds pretty good. I mean, it's got it's got some space, it's got some uh, it's got some room mics, it's got some brightness, but it's not too harsh. Nice beefy low and nice crack with the snare. You can hear everything 
uh, quite well. And again, as you saw, I have yet to put a compressor on any one of these drum tracks. Okay, a little bit of EQ, no major, you know, uh, boosting or cutting, just doing some sculpting. That was my approach here because the drums were recorded very well. So now all those things go out to, as we said before, a bus, a drum bus. And on that drum bus, I have a couple of uh, plugins. Um, so everything you've been listening to has been going through that drum bus. Um, and on my effects chain there again, my plugins, um, I put a little bit of an EQ. Again, we EQ'd all the drums individually, but as in the drum kit itself, again, I wanted to pull a little bit of that 400 hertz out to get rid of some of that boxiness. I wanted to beef a little bit of the low end to bring out the kick a little bit more, so I boosted right around 60 hertz, uh, I think one, one, two dB, and that was it. That is all running through my first compressor for drums, which is my bus drum, my drum bus, excuse me, <laughs> my drum bus compressor. Um, and I'm using the Universal Audio Fairchild. I absolutely love this plugin. Uh, every single drum kit that I mix, I always run it through this particular um, plugin. Love it. Uh, start with a preset called Drum Color, but I adjust it from there. Um, and what this does is it brings a little bit of the volume up. It tightens up the drums a little bit. Again, it's subtle, but it kind of glues the drums together. So what I'll do is I'll turn off uh, the, the EQ and the compressor on and off so you can hear it with and then without it. So here's the drum kit without the without the um, the the uh, the EQ and the uh, Fairchild compressor on the drum bus. Here's some e it's, uh, the Cambridge EQ. Okay, so there you heard a difference where I got a little bit louder, a little bit tighter, a little bit brighter um, on with the EQ. So let's just listen to the compressor for a second. Let me turn start with the compressor off and turn it on so you can hear the effect of the Fairchild. Okay, so the, so the compressor is just compressing a little. As you can see here, and I'll turn this on again so you can watch the needle here. I'll zoom up. Um, we're just doing about 1 dB of compression, maybe a little bit more at certain times. We're just trying to take the peaks and kind of squeeze the track together. Again, not trying to over compress these because remember, everything is running through our master uh, bus, which has a bus compressor on it, which is going to squeeze it a little bit more. So what I do is try to do very um, gentle compression. Um, on these tracks. I'm going to show you an extreme version of compression in a minute <clears throat> to help round out this drum sound, but this is kind of how I do, use this uh, particular plugin with this particular track. So let me show you again. So if you watch this needle, you're going to see we're not, we're not doing a ton of compression here. So here we go. So you could see maybe one dB of compressing, maybe a little bit more at times, depending on the, you know the uh, the transient says as he hits the drums a little bit harder, it's squeezing it a little bit more. So that just kind of glues the drums together. So that's our drum sound, <clears throat> our basic drum sound. And I put a little bit of reverb on it just to give it a little bit of space. The reverb plugin that I'm using um, is an I'm sure you guessed it, a Universal Audio <laughs> plugin called Dreamverb, and I actually use this for the vocals too. I use the same reverb on all the tracks that I put reverb on. I don't always do that, but for this particular example, I thought, what the hell? Let's keep it simple. Let's use one reverb plugin. It's on a on a on a on a hall, kind of a a, a mellow kind of a hall. Um, not too much, just a little bit of wetness. You can't even really notice that it's there. The room mics are giving more of the of the reverb feel. Uh, to the drum kit but this is just a little bit extra to give a little bit more uh space to the drums okay so that's i use that that plugin and we'll 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 listen to the dream verb plugin a little bit more as we get to acoustic guitars and vocals so now last thing on the drums is i did something that i uh talked about earlier uh, i have a drum uh, bus here called p drums which is for parallel drum compression now the concept is 
is if you really want to, and this is a secret I learned a while back and it, it served me well. Um, and I'm so glad that I learned how to do this. And a lot of you engineers listening to this, I'm sure have done this for years. I only stumbled onto this a few years ago. So uh, I went many years without doing this with drums and I'm so glad that I, I learned how to do this. This, this is the secret. If you want nice punchy <clears throat> drums that cut through a mix that snap through pop rock metal, doesn't matter. Uh, parallel compression works wonders. And let me show you how it works. So basically we have a bus <clears throat> that we're going to blend in with our with our regular drum bus here, and the concept is we're going to we're going to take um, the kick and the snare only in this particular example. Kick and snare. We're going to send it to this drum bus, this P drum bus, and we're going to compress the hell out of it. And let me show you what I mean. So let's solo this so you can get a feel for what this is going to sound like. And what I did was when we look back at our kick drums. You see, I sent to the P drum bus, um, not a lot, a little bit of signal. <clears throat> this is pre-fader, by the way. You want this to be a pre-fader send, and the way you turn pre or post is by clicking this. Now it's post, now it's pre. Um, so it's, it's not affected by the fader here. So I sent the kick drums. I believe I sent them both. Let me say, sometimes I do send. No, I only sent one of the kick drums. I didn't send the sample. That's right. Because I didn't want the, the slappiness of the kick to come through more as I wanted the beef to come through, the low end. And I sent the snare over both top and bottom mics. And that's it. And then what I do is, let's play something back here and let you listen to what this does just by itself. Let's talk about what I used. I used the Universal Audio 1176 compressor, one of the most uh, sought after and most well-known compressors in the hardware world. Um, excuse me, for the past 50 years. <laughs> so the concept here is to do a, a, a super uh, uh, slow attack, super fast release, and to squash the hell out of this thing. Um, this should actually be like this, I'm sorry. Um, and you're going to see how much compression we're going to use here. You hear that whacking, that, that whack, 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 and actually now I'm clipping the master bus because I screwed with the settings by mistake, so I'm going to have to turn this down a little bit. Um, but what that does is it gives that nice little wacky sound that's going to cut through the mix, and when you blend it in underneath these the, the first drum bus, it's going to make all the difference in the world, and it's really going to give that energy uh, to the drum kit as a whole. So again, you, you, you're, you're squashing the drums, you're sucking all the life out of it, and on its own it sounds pretty lousy, but when you blend it in, it's what makes all the difference in the world. So it's the only thing I have on this is this 1176 compressor squashing the hell out of this uh, out of this track here. So let me uh, mute this and we'll solo again the regular drums. Uh, let's see, we gotta take all our okay. And now we got the all the drums soloed down here. Oops, except for this kick drum which I have to solo. Okay, so now all the drums are, are going to be playing here on the drum bus. And then I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to bring it into taste so you can hear the difference. So here's the drums without the parallel compression. So there you hear the difference where it just you hear the, the snare cuts through a little more, the kick cuts through a little bit more. And let me turn it on and off. I'll mute it on and off so you can hear the difference. Again, it's subtle. It's not a huge difference, but it gives you that little more energy, that little more cut through, a little more smack that you want the drums to have. So let me, uh, let me I'll just toggle the mute on and off so you can kind of hear the difference.
So hopefully you can hear the difference. Um, it's a it's a pretty noticeable difference when you toggle it on and off like that. The snare especially. More of the snare signal is coming through here on the send than the kick drum. The kick drum's just kind of lying underneath. So that gives you a drum sound that goes from, you know, something that sounds pretty good to something that really cuts through and gives it a lot more energy. So that's kind of how I handle the drums. So once again, let's just take a listen to the drum kit. Um, I'll come back to it part of the song here where some of the times I think and stuff come in and just kind of listen to the drums and again I'll toggle this on and off and that'll conclude our uh, our drum uh, mixing and the plugins that I used and how I went about and why I did what I did again very simple one compressor on the mix bus some EQs across all the channels with some little bit of boosting little bit of cutting everything running through the virtual tape machines and everything running through the virtual console by slate digital with some parallel drum compression on the kick and the snare and here's kind of what you get as a final drum sound So there you have it. So there's the drum sound for the song Fences. Um, and let's uh, move on now to the bass guitar. Okay, now let's take a look at the uh, bass guitar. Here's our bass guitar track here. <clears throat> and the signal chain here, once again, is going to be the virtual tape machines into the virtual console, the Neve console. And our new plugin here is gonna be the SSL channel strip. Again, made by Universal Audio. <clears throat> Looks a little different than our typical EQ and compressor, it's an EQ and compressor uh, combined into one uh, to, um, this emulates uh, an old uh, console channel strip, the SSL uh, mis mixing desk, the E-series. <clears throat> this is what it look, would look like if you were working on an old school console. So, really broken down into two halves, you have the left, the left half of the, uh, of the channel strip and the right half. The left half <clears throat> has your uh, filters up top here, which we're not using any for your high pass and your low pass filters if you were going to use those. Our dynamic section here is our compressor, and you have a you know ratio, threshold, and um, uh, attack here and release. Our attack is this little red light, slow attack, fast attack. Um, and we have a gate. It's also a gate as well if you wanted to use this as a gate for, say, something like Tom's, which we're not using. Okay, and here's the gain reduction meter right here. When you play this back, you'll see we'll be getting about three, some, and then every now and again we'll hit, it'll peak up to the 6 dB of compression on this bass guitar. On the right side of the channel strip, we have the EQ section here, the red, the green, the blue, and the brown knobs. <clears throat> and we didn't do anything uh, major here, a little bit of sculpting. Here's the low frequencies down here at about 60 hertz. We boosted about uh, 5 dB here. On the low mid frequencies, <clears throat> right around uh, 2K, I boosted about 6 dB here to bring in a lot of bit of, of the uh, upper frequencies where he can, you can hear the fingers on the strings um, as this bass player, um, you know, had a lot of nice little runs, little tasty licks in there, wanted those to kind of pop out and hear those. Um, so that's why we boosted here. And then also around 700 hertz, I boosted about, <clears throat> about 2 dB, uh, or excuse me, about 3 dB as well. Okay, our on and off uh, switch for this plugin is right here, and we have a makeup gain knob, which we have a <clears throat> excuse me, our input gain, and then we have our makeup gain, which is about three dB of makeup gain because we are, are compressing about three dB. So what I'm going to do is bypass this plugin, and sh uh, you can listen to the raw bass track along with the drums, and then I'll pop it in so you can hear what the effect is. So here we go. So you can see there we're getting about 3 dB of compression. You can instantly hear it get a little bit brighter, a little bit fatter, a little bit tighter sounding of a bass, and that's kind of what we want here. So <clears throat> that's all I did to this track was just a little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression running through the uh, virtual console and the tape machines. So that's all I did for bass. And so now we have our bass and our drums uh, kind of mixed in here. 
Okay, so let's move over to the synth track here, which you, you heard, I had it soloed. Uh, the synth track, same thing, virtual console, tape machine first, virtual console second, and then we went to simple little EQ, again, the Q10, the four band, excuse me, three band EQ. And I rolled off a lot of the lows uh, right around 50 hertz, just kind of rolled everything off the bottom, scooped a little bit out around 800 hertz. There's a little nasty harshness there, carved a little bit of that out, and then put a little bit of a shelf on it to uh, brighten it up a little bit. So I can bypass the EQ, you can hear the synth, and then hear it with the EQ coming back in, and here we go. So again, really subtle, just took out some of the bottom end, nothing major here, the synth sounds good on its own, and you just kind of blend the volume into taste uh, to where you feel it's uh, loud enough. Okay, now let's take a look at some electric guitars. We have three guitar tracks here, <clears throat> Here, excuse me, we're going to start with this uh, this arpeggio, arpeggiated guitar, kind of just playing arpeggios here through the ends. Again, our um, effects chain. Uh, virtual console or tape machines again into the virtual console into um, the Renaissance EQ, which I showed you a little bit earlier on the drums. Not much here that I did with an EQ curve. I rolled off all the lows at around what is it around 197 hertz. So I started to roll everything off to get rid of all the low ends. <clears throat> Took a little bit out of around a uh, 1k, carved out about 2 dB there, and then really didn't put a shelf on it. Didn't feel like it needed to. It cut through the mix just fine. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll play this back and I'll uh, toggle the EQ on and off so you can hear the difference. Again, it's subtle. It's just ro rolling off the low end for the most part. And there's some reverb here as well to give it some space. Typically with guitar players, and um, they have their own effects, that have their own kind of tone. I don't mess with it too much. I don't EQ it too much. Uh, the guitar tone sounded great on its own. I just wanted to take out some of the low ends. So here's what that kind of sounds like. So here we go. First with... Um, without the EQ and then I'll engage the EQ so you can hear the low end kind of disappear and I'll turn it up so it's exaggerated so you can hear it a little bit. Here we go. So you can hear how it gets a little bit brighter and, and some of the low woofiness goes away when I put the EQ in. So that's obviously too loud. And actually, this was panned almost, I think, hard left um, <clears throat> in the mix. I just brought it to the center so you get a little bit better of a, um, a listen to it. So now I'll keep the EQ engaged and I'll bring it into where I think the level should be. Now keep in mind these other two guitar tracks are not playing yet. So I'm just going to kind of drop it down so it's kind of even. A little pokes out a little bit ahead of the bass so you can kind of hear it. So here we go. Okay, and then uh, one thing I forgot to mention before I forget, we actually used a compressor on this as well. So after the EQ, we went to the Renaissance compressor, which I don't think I've shown yet. Again, made by Waves. Uh, basic little compressor, has a threshold, ratio, makeup gain, attack and release. Uh, we did a four to one ratio, not too much gain, not too much compression, about three dB of compression and then so forth. Because of the three dB of gain of compression, I made up 3 dB in the makeup gain. So let me just show you what that does. I'll toggle that on and off uh, again so you can kind of hear the difference um, with the compressor kicked in and taken out. So here's with it off. Again, so what, so what the compressor is really doing here is it's turning up the volume a little bit. And because he's playing arpeggios here, you know, any guitar player, 
uh, that's picking singular notes like that, they don't hit them at the same velocity, the same intensity. So try to even out that picking sound a little bit. So the compressor kind of tightens that up. Anything that was not maybe any note that was kind of hit a little too light would be brought up in volume. Any note that was hit a little too hard that would stick out too much, it kind of brings, brings it down. So it kind of squeezes it together. <clears throat> Again, very subtle, hard to hear the changes. You may not even be able to hear the change too much, but if you really listen, you can hear how that guitar just tightens up just a little bit. And that's all we really wanted. So let me play that one more time uh, without, and then I'll kick it in with the compressor. So here's without again, and I'll turn this up a little bit so you can hear it a little bit better, even though this is way too loud for the mix, but here we go. Okay, so you can see on those little last uh, few notes there that he's picking, he's picking a little bit harder, a little bit higher in pitch, and you can see the compressor is going from about 3 dB to about 5 dB at times. It's grabbing those peaks, and that's all we're really trying to do. So I'll pan it back over to the left where it originally was. I'll bring it down a little bit so it's a little bit at the right mix. Um, <clears throat> and that's really it. That's all I really did for the guitar. So again, just, uh, the... The uh, analog tape machine, the console, a little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression, put a little bit of reverb on it to give it some space. And again, we're using the Universal Audio Dream Verb um, for the only reverb I'm using in the whole song. So that's the um, first guitar, which again is panned more left. It's just for those little tasty licks towards out and throughout the song. The other two guitar tracks um, are more standard go ahead, you know, playing through the whole song. Uh, type of a thing if I could show you that here <clears throat> you could see guitar 2 and guitar 1 pretty much play the same thing throughout most of the song here um, where this arpeggio arpeggiated guitar is kind of just playing in different sections <clears throat> so let's take a look listen to these two guitars we'll start with guitar uh, well it should probably be guitar 1 guitar 2 there we go so here's what this and I just panned them um, you know about 50 almost 60 percent to the right on one 60 percent to the right on the other so they're kind of spread out across the stereo field. So here's the first guitar. Okay, so you saw the two uh, <clears throat> the two uh, Slate Digital plugins. So here's the EQ again, Renaissance EQ, electric guitar, same kind of EQ curve. As the last guitar, for the most part, rolling off a lot of the low end, uh, <clears throat> also scooping out around 189 hertz, about 3 dB to get rid of some of that little. There was a little bit of a nasty ring there. Also carved out a little bit at around uh, 800 hertz, and also a little bit around uh, one uh, and a half K. Um, about 3 dB of each, no shelf. Sounded pretty good on its own. Like I said, with electric guitars, uh, distorted guitars especially, try to leave the guitar player's tone that he used with his amp and his pedal uh, board rig intact as much as possible. Just clear up some of the muddiness and let it kind of cut through. <clears throat> so that was the uh, EQ. And then we also used, um, again, a Renaissance compressor just like we did on the last one. So again, I'll play this back a little bit more. You could see the compressor. We're doing same thing, about 3 dB of compression. So let's take a look. And Okay, so that was the first guitar. 